name is me, Mandy, and I'm sorry it's been a full two weeks I haven't put up a video. I'm sorry. So many things have been happening. My, my husband's grandpa died, so we went up to Oregon for that. And we just, life has just gotten in the way. My little boy's been sick, I've been sick, my husband's been sick, where it's kind of sidetracked me from putting up some videos. But I am back at you, no worries. So I am excited to do a Q&A today for you guys. First, um, I have picked some of the top questions that have been asked to me, um, the most regular questions, and I wanna, I'm hoping I can cover everything for you guys. And if I don't cover everything in this video, then I will try to do another Q&A in probably like, I don't know two, three weeks, maybe a month, who knows. I posted on my Facebook and in my Instagram, um, what do you guys wanna know? What do you guys wanna know for me? So, I'm gonna kinda go through these pretty quickly. I'm not gonna put too much detail into them because there's a lot of questions. So just bear with me and I'm excited to do this. So here we go. So, I have my cute little notepad full of the questions. How do I deal with unrealistic expectations so from clients so I have a client come in I want to be blonde this day this time this setting I'm Burnett I'm a level 3 and I want to be a level 12 here's how I deal with that a I do a little consultation with my client I make sure I let them know that that's kind of unrealistic to get you know go from a super dark brunette to a super platinum blonde it is unrealistic we all probably should know that you probably could do it but do you want your hair to fall out do you want your hair to feel cotton candy do you want healthy hair how do you want it so I go in and I talk to the client let them know here's what I can do here's what I can't do um, and I pretty much just tell them how it is like if I can't take someone Burnett I mean Burnett to blonde in one sitting um, I will let them know I can't and the most hair dressers probably can't so I let them know I just I, I'm straightforward with them and I say that's unrealistic um, that's not possible we can do it probably in two three settings um, so that's that's what I do I just let them know that it's probably not gonna happen in one setting so that's that um what bleach do I use so uh, hello if you guys already watched my videos I use Redken flash lift it's my all-time favorite I love it I can't live without it I have tried a lot of bleaches and this one has just stuck with me for the last I would say probably year now so I love it it always gets my blondes the blonde that I need them to be how do you deal with unsatisfied clients um okay so Really what you have to do is if you do their hair, it doesn't turn out the way they they like or the way you liked or whatever the situation is, you pretty much just make it right. So as a hairdresser, it is our job to make the situation right. If your client walks out and they're like, oh my gosh, my hair is orange, it's not blonde, you make it right. So whether it's, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, your hair didn't take, it didn't go past that yellow orange stage, I don't know what happened. Um, hello, see you later, goodbye, like here's your money, uh, you know, like you can't be that way as a stylist, you have to make it right. So even if they leave and it's not the color that they like or it's not the color that you like but it's what the hair did and it's what the maximum hair could handle, then you make it right by, okay, let's go ahead and let's bring you back into the salon, give you a second treatment done for either cost or free. So a lot of the time, I mean, there's times where sometimes things just don't turn out exactly the way you want. Sometimes it's the hair, sometimes it's the product, sometimes it's the formulation of color that you mix. A lot of the time it is um, client's hair. You know, there's a lot of things that go into how how you can help an unsatisfied client. So I think for me, what I do is if it doesn't turn out exactly the way I like, for instance, most of the time, I'm the one who's picky. I'm the one who's like, ah, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. I want this and I want that. So I make it right, I make them come back either I mean, a week later or two weeks, I try to squeeze them into my schedule and I try to make it right and make their unsatisfaction um, satisfied. So that's kind of what I do as a stylist. I just want to make sure that they're happy. It's my name on their head, so I want to make sure that that's, that's giving me a good, you know, a good reputation. So I make it right and make them come back and I fix it for free. That's pretty much what I do. Um, what has inspired me to do YouTube? So that's a really good question. I love that. I get that all the time. So first things first, I started YouTube with 
going in as more of like a hobby. So I I used to follow, well I still do, um, Michelle Money from The Bachelor. She's been on a lot of shows. I actually started assisting for her. And then I started seeing like, oh my gosh, your channel is great. Like a lot of people watch you. You inspire women. You do a lot of things that are fun and funny and realistic and all those things, okay? So I kind of did a little bit of a different kind of idea. Teach the things that I didn't learn in hair school. So the things that I didn't learn in hair school, I have pretty much, you know, have learned myself either through YouTube or practicing or just more, it's just a natural gift to me, I guess. I think me going into the hair industry, it's, it's been just such a natural thing. It's, I guess you can say I was gifted. I guess, I don't know. I just, I love hair. I've always have. My mom went to school. My sister went to hair school. I've always been in the hair industry world. Even when I was like two or three, like I remember getting the first perm at my mom's salon. So I've always been into the hair industry anyways. Um, but what created me to love YouTube is how I was inspired by other YouTube channels that I actually learned from. And I was like, you know what, I wanna do that. I wanna make other women out there who don't learn what they learn in hair school, who struggle with certain things, who maybe just need some tips and tricks, who maybe just need to enhance their career, or maybe they haven't done hair for a long time but they wanna start practicing, practicing again. Stuff like that, I wanted to be the girl to be able to have them come to me and I can go over the detailed video. So I am a very detailed person. I go over every detail. A lot of people are like, oh, thank you so much for giving details. A lot of other YouTubers don't give all the details like you do. Is that scary? Is that something that you, that has, you know, maybe stopped you to not do YouTube? Like, what do you, you know, all these questions. Like, how, why do you go out of your way to give every detail? Like, if you give all these details, this girl's going to know how to do that at home. And then that's competition. Or the other hairstylist down the street is going to watch your video and do the same exact thing. Like, what creates you to you know, step out of your shell, all these, all these things, all these questions. So my biggest thing is honestly, I love hair. I'm passionate, I love it, and why not teach other people what I know? I'm a very self-taught artist. I have learned, I have learned a few things in hair school, but really in reality, actually, I have just taught myself on a lot of the things that I do. So, YouTube's have been amazing for me. I have met people that I would have never met. I love everyone that follows me. I love my subscribers. I don't even know you guys, but I love you anyways because you support me. It's like kind of like, for instance, a famous person. I don't consider myself famous, nor will I ever, because I'm just a regular person who is just a regular mom and wife and I do hair and it's what I do, but I'm here for you guys, so that's fun. But for instance, like a famous person, okay? I'm not gonna give the name out. My client was telling me, I paid 400 extra dollars to go see this person in concert. I went behind the scenes, I paid 400 extra dollars just to get an autograph, to say hi, to maybe get a picture, and that person didn't give me the time of the day. I spent, it was a waste of $400, and this person is one of my all-time favorite celebrities. Like, this, you know, this girl that went to, my client that went to her concert, it was like, I can't, she was so bummed out. So I look at that famous person, I think, you know what, the only reason you're here is because of your fans. The only reason why you're making money is because of the people that follow you and pay money to go to your concerts and pay, you know, pay the extra money to see you in reality. Like, I just, I, to me, I never ever want to feel or feel like I'm a famous person because that to me is just... I hate the word famous, I hate the word celebrity, I hate the word any of that. I think we are all, what makes another person different than you? You know what I mean? So another thing I have to say really quick is I do makeup and hair for the Comic Con in Salt Lake City um, and I was working with a celebrity and I was putting setting powder on his face, just setting down his, his oil of his skin and I said, what, what do you love about being a celebrity? And he says, you know what? He's actually, he said, it's actually a hard life to live. What makes me different than you? So it was cool what he said was saying, I may have more money. I may be able to travel the world more. I may be able to do all these extra things that maybe the person, uh, you know, here on the street or just a regular house 
household income earner or whatever does, but doesn't make me any different than you. And I was like, that's amazing. Doesn't make me someone cooler or someone that has more worth value or all these things. And it was so cool for me to hear that because I think us as people, we look at a famous person, we think, oh my gosh, we love them. We want to be like them. We want to have all the money. We want to travel the world. We want to have a huge house, huge, nice cars, all these things. Honestly, the reality of it is this is how I put it and this is how I, how I live my life. All I do is just love. I love people. I care for people. I don't hurt people. I'm not mean to people. I mean, at least I try not to be. I serve people. I do all these things that make me feel good as a person. And I don't ever claim to be rich and famous. I really don't. Even though if maybe one day my YouTube channel gets me to the point where I'm doing all these great things, wonderful. I'm not going to change. I'm going to just be me. So YouTube has changed my life because A, you do get money. You get paid money. And that's awesome. And that's something I didn't know from the very beginning. And the money I make is confidential. I'm not allowed to say it because I'm in a contract with that. So I'm sorry. I can't tell you how much money I make. But it is a bonus to be able to make money. But the biggest reason was is to inspire other hairdressers or other girls who want to see transformations or just random people who want to come onto the channel and be like, oh my gosh, look, it is possible to get a girl from dark to blonde, you know, like all those things. So that was what has inspired me is just me. I've been inspired by others, so I want to inspire others. So that's what I do. Where do I see myself in five years? Oh, uh, this is a hard question. Like who really has a five-year plan? You know, I don't, I don't really know. I really don't know. I probably see myself a more personal, but I want to have another baby. So I want to have a solid of two kids. Um, so a baby, definitely, it better happen. Um, and then more probably, um, I want to be able in five years to claim myself. Oh, this is hard. Okay, so my biggest goal is and dreams are, I would say for anyone in the hair industry, their goals would be like celebrity hair artist. Okay, so for me, I have done celebrities. I've done hair and makeup for celebrities. I already work with celebrities. I don't claim myself as a, you know, I claim myself as a celebrity artist because I've done celebrity artists and I've done celebrities and I've done all these things. But I would honestly love to see myself like Hollywood, um, based off of Hollywood, not like I said before, not being famous, but more just like Hollywood hair, Hollywood makeup. Um, being on like reality TV shows and doing hair and makeup for that stuff like that I see myself doing um, um, Maybe some house calls for like the big wigs out in Hollywood who knows like I just I see myself being kind of just Kind of everywhere like I I always also claimed I wanted to be like a platform artist Which pretty much you travel the world and you do hair and you educate and you love people and you all these things so that is, that is where I maybe see myself. Oh, and probably, probably before five years, but you know, I'll have my future amazing salon in my home and be able to build that. And I have a vision for all that. So a house, a kid, um, Hollywood hair, reality TV shows, and being here and being myself. That's where I see myself in five years. What camera do you use? I use the GoPro Hero 3, which is crazy. Most are like, what, you use the GoPro? Um, Yeah, because it's awesome. It has 1080p, it videos in high quality, it's mobile, it's quick, it's fast, it's easy, it's small. You can take it anywhere and everywhere you go. Sometimes I actually also use my iPhone 6 because honestly, it has a awesome camera, so, I use my iPhone a lot and my camera and my GoPro, but I do want to get the Canon Rebel. If you guys have another camera suggestion, comment below and let me know what you use as a camera because I am looking to invest in another one. Is if I wasn't doing hair, what would I be doing? Oh, that's so hard too. These questions are hard. So um, I always, I actually always wanted to do photography. I always wanted to go out and just do be like a lifestyle, photo lifestyle photographer. I actually got like a small scholarship in high school um, to go to any photography school I wanted. So I was going to go to Brooks Photography in Santa Monica in California, but I just knew that wasn't, ah, that wasn't for me. That wasn't for me. I wanted to do hair. I wanted to change lives. I wanted to make people feel beautiful. I wanted to do that. So 
before hair, I I questioned a few kind of different job careers. I also wanted, this is kind of random, but I wanted to be a sonogrammic technician and do like ultrasounds for all the moms having their babies. But then I thought about it, I was like, you know, oh my gosh, that's kind of, that's an amazing job, but yet that's actually kind of a hard, sad job because what if your baby's dead in your belly and you have to tell that mom? Like, that is sad. I don't want to have to deal with that. That would make me cry. And I would never want to have to tell a mom that their baby's dead. So I think the hair industry has been the best for me. Um, other question is, do you ever feel uncomfortable with clients coming into your home because I own a home salon? Um, yes and no. A, I am very, very picky on who I choose to come into my home. I get to know them first. I make sure they send me a picture. I have a mini consultation over the phone with them. I make them... I pretty much just get the the vibe off of how they are. Um, it is, there's times where it's like, okay, I know I shouldn't have you in my salon, like stuff like that where that's uncomfortable for sure. But um, for the most part, I get to know my client before they come in. And what's nice is at this point in time as a stylist, I have a lot of clients. I'm a very high demand hairdresser and I can't just take everyone on. But when you have a home salon, it's pretty easy to be able to like, oh, sure, like, it's at my house, like I could do your hair at midnight, like no big deal. Honestly, I used to be that way, but now I have a set schedule, a set, you know, a routine, and all the clients that I have now, I have already done at least once, twice, three times before. So now I've earned, they've earned my trust and I've earned theirs. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, but there are times where I've had to take some clients out. So that's happened too. So. That was uncomfortable. What school did I go to? So in hair school, I live in Utah. I went to the school called Capelli Hair Institute and it's no longer existing. It shut down, um, I think a few years ago, which is a bummer, um, but it was a family owned business. The owner hired his sister. The sister was an amazing instructor. I specifically went to hair school because of this specific hair instructor and then he fired her and that was just bad news. And I was like, no, she can't leave. That's why I'm here. Um, so hair school for me wasn't, wasn't my favorite, I'll be honest. I think anyone that's in hair school can kind of say like, oh, I either hate it or I either love it, or it's a mixed thing. I think for me, I went into hair school kind of already being pre-educated because of being in the hair industry my whole life with my mom and my sister and stuff like that. But I went to school kind of having more knowledge. And so when I was learning the things I was learning, I was like, oh, I already know that. Oh, I already know that. But based off of school, it is very important to choose the right school. Um, make sure you go in and you get to know the instructors. You get to know the people that run the school because that is a big deal. See how you feel. So another question I have on here is, how do you choose what hair school to go to? So I'm gonna interact this question with this. So how you choose is you pretty much just really, like I said, go to the school, get the vibe you're feeling, go meet the person, go meet the instructors, go meet the people, go see what the, the, what the school's like. Make sure the school has a good feeling, it's bright, it's fun, all these things. Um, Get to know. Get to know what the school's like. Get, ask questions. You guys, don't be scared to ask questions to the, the people that are running the school. I think right now the biggest thing with hair school is there's so many girls that go to hair school. So it's so tricky because it's like, am I getting the individual education that I need for me to be successful? Um, honestly, here's the thing. Hair school is pretty much... I mean, it's a place to go to learn, of course, but you really, as a hairdresser, you have to go into school being already knowledgeable and open-minded with things. Like, you don't learn everything in hair school, and you and you probably won't, and you're not gonna be able to learn whatever you're learning from your instructor and, like, pretty much mimic that. You know what I mean? So if you learn this haircut and you watch this haircut, then it, great. You watched it, you learned it, but do you know how to do it? You know what I mean? So you really got to go into it, practice. For me, I ha I'm very visual and very hands-on. Like I do not give me a book. Do not give me something to read off of. Do not show me, okay, here's, you know, here's your head. Here's all of these sections of hair. Here's all the things you got to do. And here's how you got to cut it. No, that's not how I work. I am very visual. I just get into the hair and I visionize where exactly the hairs have to fall, what directions they have to be, and all these things. So I'm a very hands-on, visual, 
not really a book book person um but hair school is a big deal make sure you just question and go into the school get a tour make sure you feel comfortable um and in utah the school that i recommend going to is actually a school that i will be going into on every two um every other tuesdays and doing some guest artist work and special education for the girls that are almost graduating hair school but that's that school called mandolin academy in american fork um so if you're in utah and you're wondering what school to go to that's the school i would suggest going to because it's bright it's beautiful it's big it's a great location and then you also have an aesthetic program you can walk down two seconds down the street and there's your school for aesthetic schooling so i love mandolin academy things i learned in school that weren't very useful or necessary that's good that's hard so in school you learn the i honestly say in school you learn the basics okay you just learn the basics. You don't learn how to do all the intense coloring and the melting, the melting and the ombres and the balayage and the hair painting and all these things. That is something that you go out of your way out of school and you learn and you try your hardest to teach yourself. Because honestly, nowadays hair schools may be different. I went to school seven years ago. That's another question. How long have you been doing hair? I've been out of school for seven years now. I haven't been doing it for seven years, but I've been out seven years. So um, in hair school, I just learned basic things, you guys. I mean, all the diseases, all the things that are really not necessary. I mean, diseases are a big deal. Yes, you do have to get, you have to make sure you know what the diseases are. But I would say the things that aren't necessary in the, like when you learn in school and then go out of school is all the things from the book. Like, it's necessary to know those things. It's very, it's a requirement in hair school, you know, to know the diseases and the rules and regulations and all that stuff. But it's something that doesn't really go into your hair career when you're done. The basics, I guess. I mean, you have to know the, and that's hard. You have to know the basics, but then again, you take those basics and you just advance them. That's kind of what I've done. So I hope that answered that question. What's your best hairspray? Okay, so this is gonna go into the questions of what are my favorite products? What are my favorite products and why? I'm gonna go through this really fast, okay? So here are some of my very favorite products as a stylist and then products that have changed my life as a, hair, as a hairstylist. So first things first, Redken Flash Lift Bleach, always, every day, love it, we'll always use it. Done and done. The Wet Brush, oh my gosh, this has changed my life. I love it, I own like seven myself, but every single girl, Every single client that I have that I do color for, they go home with a wet brush because it will change your life. Favorite dry shampoo, Redken Pillow Proof, second day extender, smells amazing, it actually works, it's good, it's really good for actually blondes, brunettes, it has a, it's a white kind of, it's white, so you may not want this for a brunette, but blondes, this is my favorite. Um, deep condition treatments. I love the Redken Magnetics Color Extend Deep Attraction. It's protein and you have to follow the rules. You don't just get a, a deep condition treatment and you're like, oh, I'm going to put this all over my hair and it's going to stay on for the next 24 hours. There are some you can do that, but this one you have to follow the rules with. 5 to 15 minutes max on your hair. Love that one. What shampoo and conditioner do you love and that you recommend for your clients? Pureology. Purology all day, every day. I love it. First, I love the hydration. Um, it gives your hair that minty, can, like cooling sensation, which is really good if you're looking to grow your hair. Um, having a stimulating like this, where it's a minty cooling feeling on your scalp, um, that that um what that does for you is that stimulates your hair follicle. So this is amazing. It's a color protectant and it's for dry color treated hair. So I think everyone has dry colored treated hair. So this is great. What's your favorite hairspray? I love Redken 28 Control Addict. Love it, love it. It smells amazing. It's light. You can move your hair. It's all over my hair right now. I love it. And I also like Privé. So this stuff is very lightweight, very, very neutral, very natural smelling. Um, and I got this at the LA Fashion Week when I went there and the owner gave it to me and was like, Throw Redken away and use Prevé. I was like, no, they can both be my favorite. So I love them both. Okay. What's your favorite purple shampoo or conditioner? Redken Blonde Idol. It's my favorite. It has a dial from one to seven. It's really hard to get out. Like, it's so hard to get out. Like, it's annoying how hard it is. But I love this one. It works really good. What is What would be your go-to favorite product to tell your clients that have dry hair? 
anti-snap from Redken. Absolutely love it. It's my favorite. It's a leave-in treatment and you can put it on your damp hair and it smells amazing. It's lightweight and it actually works. So Redken anti-snap. What product has changed your life? Oh, this is my favorite one of all time. This is a new product that has completely changed my life. I bet you guys might guess. I'm not showing you yet. It's changed my life. It's changed my life, my client's life. It has changed the way that I'm able to work. It's, oh my gosh, everything about Olaplex is amazing. It's good for every single thing. It's good for girls that want to go blonder. It's girl, good for brunettes. It's good for shine. It's good for toners. It's good for perms. It's good for a actual treatment. It's good to just put all over your hair whenever you want. Like, it's seriously amazing product, and I have been in love with it. I, I would say out of all things I'm showing you, this is my favorite. Olaplex, you win. What are your favorite toners? Okay, this is easy. Redken 90-90. V. All fa all time favorite toners. I use them for every single thing. Even if you're a brunette and I put a little bit of like caramel tones in there, I still use them. I still use Redken. Shazy Q, 19, What is your very favorite base breaker? So a girl that has roots, but they want to soften their roots. I use Redken 12 Ash Violet. Love it. Works the best. Sometimes they put 10 and 20 volume in. I like to individually, like I'll either use a 10 volume or a 20 volume to bake the, break the base. Oh, I forgot to put in um, Moroccan oil, deep conditioner, smoothing, um, a smoothing mask. Love it. Intense conditioning, anti-frizz. Smells amazing. Moroccan oil is one of my favorites as well. What do you like to use for men's men's hair or men's haircut? I actually don't do men's haircuts because they're a waste of my time. So the people out there that have asked for requesting of men haircutting, I am sorry. I don't do men haircuts. I love them. I'm good at them, but I just don't do them. Okay, but I do like to use the retro stimulating sulfate free shampoo. It's a minty cooling sensation and it gets your hair very clean. What blow dryer do you have? Oh! The Sanvia blow dryer, oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. It blows hard. That's dirty, but it blows. You guys, it, this stuff, this this blow dryer is absolutely amazing. It um, totally, 100% dries the hair so fast. It's fat and it's little and it's lightweight and Sanvia product is amazing. In fact, what else do I have as Sanvia? Well, I want everything Sanvia, but these are my two Sanvia products. The Sleeker and the Blow Dryer. I love them both. They have both changed my life in a lot of ways. The Sleeker is amazing. It gets your hair very straight and smooth and shiny. And this works magic. I absolutely love it. And it's endorsed by Redken, which I absolutely love. Redken's my go-to. Sambia, everything. Okay. Last product that I am obsessed with is what shears do you have? The Shark Fins. The Shark Fins. I had the Shark Fin Shears. I actually have owned um, shark fin shears before. I actually got another pair. So I have two shark fin shears, this side and this side. So I have two and I love them. Holy cow, if you want a new shear, shark fin, I'm gonna be doing a review on shark fin shears soon. So love my shark fin shears. Love them, love them. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many questions, but this video is already long. I'm so sorry. How okay. long have I been doing hair? Seven years, I've been graduated. I've been doing hair for five years though, because before this, I worked at T-Mobile as a sales representative for five years. So I actually worked there and I did hair a little bit on the side, but not as much as I wanted. I wanted to do hair, that was always my thing, but I went into that job making great money, doing a really good job, doing a really good job at that um, job. And I actually love the sales industry and I'm a people person. And I, so I loved that job, but it wasn't my passion. So I started doing hair consistently full time um, about four years ago. If I could go back, this is a fun question. If I could go back in time, if I could go back in time as the hair artist I used to be, and where I am now, um, what would I tell myself? So back in time when I was just a cute little hairstylist who didn't really know anything, I wish I would have told myself, rock the confidence. Act like you know how to do it. 
if you don't act like you do because honestly I do that pretty much all day every day I mean I know what I'm doing but if there's someone that comes to me and is like oh my gosh this is what I want and I'm like oh I've never done that before but I'll act like I do know how to do it like that's what I wish I would have told myself is to rock the confidence and just put yourself out there and just do it just do it because you never know until you try. Um, how did you build your clientele? Oh, this is so good. Honestly, I'm gonna make this simple, quick and fast. Social media. Honestly, social media. I have posted before and after pictures from the very beginning of my career and I have built an audience and I have built in trust. And I have built trust in you know, the public was showing them a picture. So I honestly can tell any girl out there, any girl that's in cosmetology school right now, how do you build a clientele? How do you get yourself out there? How do you do this? Post your pictures, post, post, post. Like, don't be afraid. Who cares if people don't follow you? Who cares if people don't like you? It doesn't matter. You gain one, you lose one. It doesn't matter. I overgram on Instagram all the time and I don't even care because it's my work and I'm proud of it. So I'm gonna let people know that that's my work. So um, I would say social media has built my clientele like crazy. Of course, I've been in a salon before where I've accepted walk-ins and that happened, you know, but that wasn't anything, that, that that was way back in the day when I first started school. Like, I've been in a home salon pretty much my whole career. Um, I was in my mom's salon, and then I've been in a home salon pretty much, yeah, my whole career. So I have just done social media posts. Facebook and Instagram have changed my life. Thank you. Okay, how do you push through the gold and yellow stage when you are highlighting or doing a blonde client? Most girls are so afraid, most hairdressers are afraid to keep bleach, I guess you can say, lightener on the hair long enough. So honestly, that's my biggest trick. And how I do as a stylist to get past the orange and yellow stage as a blonde. I am not reserved. The package says leave on for 45 minutes. Guess what? I don't do that. I just go off of what I think is best. So don't be scared. Just don't wash out the hair. If you're starting to see like, oh my gosh, the hair is turning really blonde. Good. Keep it on there for about five more, ten more minutes. Like just play it out. Kind of keep looking at it and seeing what it's doing when it's past that yellow stage and past that you know they cons consider that yellow stage being like the pale yellow banana color past that stage get it on more honestly nowadays if you if you have olaplex you can keep liner on for a really long time. You really can. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Your hair will be okay. Just make sure you put deep condition treatments. Let your clients like let your clients know that you need to go home and take care of your hair with good products, good conditioners, Olaplex number three, all those things. But honestly, don't be reserved. Like just do it. Just put lightener on the hair and keep it on for a while. Like that's I think that's the biggest trick is like hairstylists always wash out their hair the client's hair before it's fully processed and that's why it's brassy and yellow so keep it on longer that's what i suggest what brand of hair extensions do i like i go between two my main one is laced hair extensions amazing i absolutely love it it's local for me in utah um but they they ship worldwide and it's amazing hair i love 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 laced hair extensions it's my favorite the second one is gonna be bombshell extensions same quality of hair pretty much they're both great so i use either laced hair or bombshell how has youtube benefited my life honestly the people that i've met the people that follow me um the money that i'm making um the opportunities that i'm getting the extra gigs that are happening that I would have been able to do on my own. Um, just other companies out there seeing who I am and you know wanting to promote me or wanting me to promote them, stuff like that. It has changed my life in so many ways. But for the most part, it's getting to know and meet you guys and my fans and my followers. Like I, I want to meet you all one day. Like I think you guys are all amazing for supporting my channel. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, is there anything about hair you don't like? Uh, the time it takes. <laughs> hair takes a long time. Um, what do you love about doing hair? Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick fast, 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 um, story. So why I love hair. There was a client that came to me, okay? I'm not gonna say names. She has never felt pretty. She's always felt like, oh my gosh, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I've never had a boyfriend, I'm a school teacher, I, I, I own a cat, like, I don't even have anything going for me. Like, this, this, this client specifically 
was someone who is super insecure and has never felt pretty. So she heard about me, I did her hair, I glammed her up. I did her hair, her color, I cut her hair, I gave her a spray tan, I did her makeup. I did all these things to make her feel beautiful. I even painted her nails, and I don't even do nails. But I did all these things to make her feel special and beautiful. At the end of the day, I glammed her up to the point where she, like in my salon I have every single wall has a mirror. And so she's like, is there another wall I can look at? Like is there something I can look at to not look at myself because that's how sad of a person she was you guys she did not feel pretty and I was like that is not okay like you deserve to feel pretty like that is so sad so I did my best I colored her hair I did all these things for her to make her feel just beautiful and at the end of the day I was finished and she like actually looked at herself in the mirror and she was like oh my gosh like oh my gosh I feel pretty like I look pretty I this is shocking like I can't even believe I look like this holy cow and she just started bawling like I might cry a little bit right now because it was seriously amazing like that's she started bawling and she was like thank you so much like I feel pretty like I feel like I could maybe go on a date I could maybe go find a boyfriend like maybe someone will like me like I didn't know I could look this way and honestly she was such a beautiful person like no one should ever feel like they're not pretty like I don't care what hair type you have I don't care how fat or skinny you are like you every person should feel beautiful so I honestly that day that uh, that day with that client had changed my life like I was completely like you know what this is why I'm here the way I felt that day and the way that she left feeling like she was beautiful and she walked out of my house like with confidence she was like stroking and like walking like okay like I look good like okay I can go to the store and feel pretty like she just felt good and I was like oh my gosh this is why I'm doing this like this is my calling of life like I love doing hair because I loved making another woman feel beautiful that was seriously my biggest thing and so so from there on forward I have just been so passionate with hair because I literally, I think internally you have to be in love with yourself, which sounds ridiculous, but you have to love yourself. And physically, you can you can get yourself going and looking beautiful. And I think the most important thing is to love who you are and to enhance that beauty on the outside, honestly. So honestly, you guys, I hope I answered some of these questions. I didn't go over everything because this video is already long. I'm sorry. But I want you guys to know that I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Like, it's been... This YouTube thing has been so amazing for me. I didn't know I could get where I'm going with it. I just, I love everyone and I I hope to everything that I'm helping and teaching and educating and still having fun with this. Like, I am who I am. I am not being anyone different. This is who I am as a person. And you may like me, you may not, and that's okay. I still love you if you don't. So, anyways, you guys, I hope I answered some of these questions. I love you guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you on my next video.